It's a spooky week number eight in the NFL with games falling on Halloween, and it's time to get prepared to make some wagers with the Barber Brothers. Welcome to Betting with the Barbers, powered by Superbook Sports. I'm Ron Kruk, joined as always by former New York Giant Tiki Barber and former Tampa Bay Buck Ronde Barber. Hello, men. I got to ask you, do you have some big costume plans for Halloween this Sunday? We are going as a family as Alice in Wonderland. So my Whoa. wife will be the king, the, the queen of hearts. I'm going to be the Mad Hatter. Uh, my daughter, one of my daughters will be the Cheshire Cat. And then uh, uh, Brooklyn will be um, Alice. So it'll be fun. Very impressive. I, my, kids, my, kids are, my kids are out of the house, empty nested. <laughs> uh, I might even be home. I might leave some candy. I don't know. Uh, but I'm going to Kansas oh. State's homecoming, buddy. That's where I'm going. That's what, I'm gonna I'm gonna dress up like a like a Jayhawk uh, in Kansas State. <laughs> and see what happens to me. <laughs> Big win for Kansas yeah, State last man. week. You got you guys got to feel bad because they got their head, the head coach at Texas Tech fired last weekend. Yeah, unbelievable. Well, hey, at least leave some candy out there, Ronde. Come on. Oh, I know. Look, like my my wife is a, a Kansas State Wildcat graduate, so. Uh, if I show up in in, in, uh, in a in a in a Jayhawk outfit, I think people <laughs> will respect me because they gave they gave uh, they gave Oklahoma a heck of a game last week, man. It was fun. Yeah, no no doubt about it. All right, well, it's uh, you know before we make our predictions, fellas, for Week Eight, I, I just kind of wanted to quickly hit on a trend that we've seen so far this NFL season where some big time double digit favorites are, are covering more than they're not. Uh, last week, there were three huge double digit favorites and two covered easily. One, the, your Tampa Bay Buccaneers Ronde, 12 point favorites easily uh, beat the bears by 35. And then uh, there was the Cardinals who easily covered the 20 and a half point uh, spread against the Texans. Only those pesky Detroit Lions uh, kept it competitive against the Rams and covered the 16 points uh, uh, spread. But, you know, we used to say the NFL was too competitive and bad teams weren't that, um, yeah. you know, much worse than the good teams. But it doesn't seem to be the case this year. What are you, What's your take? Uh, why do you think the top teams in the NFL – are covering these large spreads? I think because those two teams that you just mentioned have rookie quarterbacks that aren't very good. <laughs> like, th th and this was the week of the blowout. I mean, there were six games decided by twenty-two plus points this week. So, mm -hmm. re really, what's the what's the what's the real question? We knew that Tampa was going to kill Chicago because uh, Chicago's quarterback is is just he's so green. He's like a little cubby bear now. He's not he's not a full bear yet. Um, and then, and then, uh, what's the guy in uh, Houston? Um, uh, Davis, Stanford Mills, Mills. Davis Mills. Davis Mills. Are you, are you are you kidding me? There's no chance that he has a, 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 a the ability to put enough points on the board to, to keep up with, with the spread. So I, I think it's it, it, if you're trying to be variable in your betting, look at these yeah. teams with quarterbacks that are having to play that probably weren't intended to play against good teams, and that that spread's going to be blown way out of proportion. Yeah, Ron, I think the other side of this, too, is that the teams that you're talking about, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the Arizona Cardinals, are really good on offense. Yeah. And so if they're given any leeway, they're going to run away with the opportunities that are that are presented to them. And, you know, we're not in college. You know, it's not like, hey, we got to respect you and keep the game close. If you're going to allow a team to score 50, they're going to score 50. Right. Yeah. The New York Jets yeah. gave up 54 points to the not too great New England Patriots, by the way. That was yeah. unbelievable. So far, uh, the double digit favorites guys this season have covered eight out of 11 games. And week number eight, there are some massive underdogs, including the Dolphins getting 13 and a half versus the Bills, Texans getting 14 and a half against the Rams. Giants plus 10 at Kansas City and the other New York team getting 10 points at home against the Bengals. Well, let's get things rolling and feature uh, our first uh, game of the week for week number eight. That's the New England Patriots, fellas, uh, coming in with a three and four record. 
traveling to LA to take on the four and two chargers. Now don't look now. I mean, it looks like the Patriots have turned things around a little bit, but again, that was against the jets, but they scored over 50 <laughs> points as Tiki pointed out. Uh, it, it, so far this year, the Patriots have kept it close against some of the top teams like Dallas and Tampa chargers are coming off the beatdown that they suffered uh, in Baltimore, but they had a buy last week to regroup superbook.com odds coming in the chargers opened up as a minus five and a half point favorite the line has remained steady still at five and a half now the op the over under opened at 47 and a half and it's moved up to 49 of course uh lines are subject to change but let's break down our first matchup the patriots and the chargers tiki it's all yours yeah this one is a hard one to look at because history will tell you that the new england patriots are going to go out there and play well last year it was justin herbert's worst game of his rookie season and they lost 45 to nothing he he had 20, 49% completion percentage and two interceptions with no touchdowns. And also, uh, history will tell you the New England Patriots play well against teams coming off their bye week. They're 9-2 and two over the last few years. And so they know how to prepare and get ready for teams that are rested, so to speak. I love where the New England Patriots are. I'm, I would take them getting five and a half in this game. Uh, Damian Harris, their running back, has rushed for 100 yards and a touchdown over the last couple of games. And Mac Jones, when he doesn't turn the ball over, is as effective a rookie as there is right now at the quarterback position. I know it's a tough trip going all the way from New England, all the way out to, to Los Angeles. But I like Bill Belichick getting him his team situationally ready to play a really good uh, Los Angeles Chargers team who has been getting gashed defensively the last couple of weeks. 38 points per game they've given up the last two games. Well, I, I know we don't uh, script this, but I just got to I got to disagree, people. I just I just don't. And by the way, Ron, the unders this year, 76% unders are winning this year which is crazy wow. it's like is this the lowest score uh nfl in, in, in history here so I, I look at this game and, and it, it comes down to one thing it, can the chargers bounce back after the bye week and the drubbing they took from 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 baltimore at, at home i'm gonna say yes i think this line is correct i still think justin herbert is one of the best young quarterbacks in the football uh, Joe Burrow, notwithstanding, of course, um, he's top 10 in yards and TDs. He's got great receiving talent and Mike Williams and Keenan Allen, Austin Eckler and shit. Uh, hell, Jared Cook, same birthday as the Barbers, by the way, 15 years younger. He's still balling at, at 31 years old. They have they have the offensive firepower. Now, their defense does concern me because they're last in the last in the NFL versus the run. Uh, but they are near best against the pass going against, uh, up against a rookie quarterback. So I, I like them because they take chances. They are the opposite of New England. Mac Jones, is he's, he's good, right? He can play. Uh, he's shown some flashes. Their defense is stingy. Uh, but they're three and four because they haven't closed out close games. And they found ways to lose games that they probably should have won. Um, can, can they hang with the firepower? Jacoby Myers, Kendrick Bourne. I mean, these guys, I don't, I don't know. Hunter Henry's coming back to, to his first team. I, I don't think that matters. I love Damian Harris because he has big time uh, potential. But they, they played an incredibly incompetent team last week in the Jets, right? Mm -hmm. And they dropped just a completely efficiency bomb on them. Robert Salah's defense was just completely overmatched. Uh, I, I don't think it'll be easy to replicate that on, against a rested Chargers team. Uh, and this is, you know, you talk about the road game. This is the farthest trip that they'll have to play all year. So I think this, this line is correct. I'd give the Chargers five and a half easily. Five and a half point favorites are the L.A. Chargers. I like it. The Barber brothers disagreeing on game number one. That's what we're talking about. I'm jumping on now with Rondé on this one. I, I think the Chargers have been sitting around on their bye week thinking about that loss to Baltimore. Uh, and, and I think Justin Herbert will bounce back from that loss and play well. I, I think the Chargers will cover it. Be prepared coming into week number eight by staying on top of the latest lines and line movement at superbook.com. Download the Superbook app today and get in the action. Make sure that you are following us on social media as well at Superbook Sports. All right, game number two. And quickly, just a note on, on uh, 
on the uh, the Chargers quarterback. Uh, Herbert comes in. He has eight to one odds, according to Superbook, to win the NFL MVP. Game number two, Pittsburgh Don't Steelers. It. Don't take it. Don't take Don't the take MVP it. odds. Nobody take them. No, Brady solidified it again with four touchdowns. <laughs> It's 21 through seven games already for the Bucs. It's, it's over with, people. It's done. <laughs> well, you can still make your bets, though, at Superbook.com. Don't, don't worry yet. You can throw those in there. All right. Let's talk game number two, fellas. Uh, Pittsburgh Steelers, three and three, traveling to their rivals, the Cleveland Browns, who are four and three. Huge game for the, these two teams trying to keep pace with the uh, Ravens and Rondé's Bengals in the AFC North. Uh, the Browns guys still look like a mass unit. Injuries galore, and it looks like at this point that Case Keenum will get his second start with uh, Baker Mayfield revealing he has a broken bone in his left shoulder and yeah. a fully torn labrum. Browns still have that solid uh, third-ranked rush defense in the NFL. That's going to be a key taking on Pittsburgh's top running back, Najee Harris. Uh, Pittsburgh will be well-rested coming into this game off the bye week, and that's a good thing for the veteran quarterback, Ben Roethlisberger. Superbook.com odds. Cleveland Open, guys, as a three-point favorite. Uh, they are currently, as of this morning, a three-and-a-half-point favorite. The Open – uh, for the over under was at 44 points. That's gone down to 42 and a half points. Rondé, break down this game for us. Well, Cleveland finally stopped their three game slide versus your now floundering <laughs> Broncos last week. <laughs> yeah, was that was that was a brutal game. Brutal game at all. And, and look, it, P Pittsburgh's won two games in a row uh, before the bye by sticking with Najee Harris, who, who's averaging 23 touches and 101 yards in the rushing game. I love that. Uh, but I, I think Cleveland are clear, clearly the better better team here. Uh, they have one of, if not the best, offensive lines in the NFL, as evidenced by uh, leading the league in rushing. And guess what? It doesn't matter who's playing running back. No Chubb, no Hunt. Mr. Tabret, give me Dearness Johnson for 146. Like, who is Dearness Johnson? I have no idea who that dude is. Uh, Denver he goes has out, a way of, of making uh, heroes out of guys like <laughs> Making Johnson. heroes out of guys. Uh, but, to the, but, to, but to the point, it doesn't matter who's playing quarterback. They're 27th in the past. They're not asking the quarterback to win games for them. It's, this is a Pittsburgh team that's, you know, preventing teams from scoring, yes, and easily – you know, they have one of the most impactful players in football in T.J. Watt, which, by the way, the defensive end that most impacts the game between him and Miles Garrett is going to be fascinating to watch in this game. Uh, but otherwise, I don't I don't really like Pittsburgh on defense. I don't think Devin Bush is who they think he is in, in, in versus this run defense. And they don't take the ball away. So Cleveland's just going to methodically beat these guys. Ben's playing better, yes. He's playing steady, but he's unspectacular. He's not the guy that we once knew that he was. Um, perhaps he'll come out motivated because this is a division game. But you know, Cle Cleveland has the second best defense in football, man. And and yeah. Pittsburgh is not as explosive as they once were. Mike T's my guy, but I see this as a low scoring, close game uh, of attrition that Cleveland covers three and a half. It, 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 they're playing at home. They know where they sit on the on the, on the table, so to speak, uh, in the in the AFC uh, North, and they, and they know they have to win this football game. Tiki, do you agree? Rondé's throwing a lot of stats at you. I mean, if you forgot the Miles Garrett's leading the league in sacks and and pressures, and with nine and a half and nine tackles for a loss. Did you see T.J. Other... Watt win that game the other day? Did you see? Yeah, I, that, but that, himself see, that's that my point. I mean, day. by the way, Dearness Johnson is one of the great stories in football. We had him on my radio show this past yes. week. He was at USF. The reason he didn't get me burned because he was sitting behind Marlon Mack on that team. So he yeah. graduates, has nowhere to go. He's fishing. He's on a fishing boat. That's how he made money to take care of his kid. He sent letters to the AAF every team. He sent him a note imploring him to get him out there. He goes and plays. He leads that league until it collapses, gets a chance in Cleveland, and here he is. You're right. It doesn't matter who's running Pretty back. Cool. But this kid, Dearness Johnson, is a stud. And he's you watch him play, he's dynamic. I love what they're doing. And Case Keenum, by the way, we forget in 2017 when Kevin Stefanski was the offensive coordinator for the Minnesota Vikings, he went 11-3 and three and had 21 touchdowns, only seven interceptions. Yeah. Case Keenum's going to be fine uh, for this Cleveland Browns team, maybe even better than Baker has been for this Cleveland Browns team. However, there's this is an emotional week. 
First of all, Ben Roethlisberger is 23-3-1 against the Cleveland Browns. Right? He just wow, dominates man. them. Second of all, they're finally running the football. Over the last couple of weeks, uh, Najee Harris has gotten off, and they 32 carries and 133 yards per game on the ground. So they're doing getting back to their fundamentals. But I think the thing that you're discounting, Rondé, is the emotion of this game. We forget the Cleveland Browns beat – beat down actually the Pittsburgh Steelers in the wild card round last year it was 28 to nothing in the first half they oh, yeah. have not forgotten that they, came, they ended up winning 47 I think the 30 uh, 38 or whatever it was it became a game but they have not forgotten this in Pittsburgh and let's also not forget that Mike Tomlin's pissed off right now not because of anything that's happened in football but people are speculating that the a black coach <laughs> with the Pittsburgh Steelers would leave the greatest job in football to go mm. coach the USC Trojans like like, it, like that was a promotion. I mean, it's insulting. Yeah. Even when we would even suggest that. I know that it was out there. It's been talked about, but I like the emotional uh, win uh, opportunity for the for the Pittsburgh Steelers here. It is a division game, as you say, Rondé. It's three and a half for a reason. Uh, it may be close. I'm going to take Pittsburgh getting three and a half in this game. They may lose this game, but it's not going to be a blowout. Barber Brothers battling it out in week number eight. That's uh, two disagreements already. And, and this one, I'm, I'm going with you, Tiki. I like, uh, I like Pittsburgh in a tough, you know, AFC North battle. I, I think um, the Steelers are coming off that bye, and they've won four straight coming off a bye. I like the emotional uh, aspect of this game, too, getting some revenge. I just think uh, I think it's going to be a close one. I just think it's going to be one of those old school uh, throwdown, uh, you know, battles that we have yep. seen between these two teams for so many years. I just think Pittsburgh keeps it close yep the black right. and blue division for a reason it's gonna be ugly yep exactly right heavyweight battle me. both guys I'm just thrown down i'm wanting my t to win i just don't think they're gonna cover three and a half <laughs> I, <get it>. I, <laughs> I say that almost every week all right well it's yeah. now time for the super book sports Barber Brothers Games of the Week. Uh, both guys will pick their Games of the Week. And remember, before you lock in your picks, make sure you keep on top of the latest lines at Superbook.com and download the Superbook app today. All right, Tiki, all you, what's your Game of the Week? The uh, Atlanta Falcons are hosting the Carolina Panthers, and they're, get, they're laying only three. Not forget, the yeah. Carolina Panthers only scored three points last week. Sam Donald was benched for another AAF star, P.J. Walker, uh, at the end of that game. Sam's been sacked 21 times after a hot start down there. We had 10 total touchdowns, five rushing through, five receiving, and he looked like a resurrection project. He's a shell of that right now. He's getting beat up. He doesn't throw an easily catchable ball. And as a result, Robbie Anderson, who was supposed to be a stud on this team, has uh, the worst catch percentage in the National Football League. 36.7%. Odo Beckham the second on that list, by the way, at 47%. Wow. <laughs> but it's been bad for Carolina. It's been really bad for Carolina offensively. And the defense that at one point was number one in the NFL is 20th. For three weeks, they were number one in the NFL. Do you know how hard it is to go from one to like 24th in That's total bad. defense in three weeks? Right. So it just tells you how bad they have been. Uh, and Atlanta is starting to turn it up. They're starting to crank those screws. And it's all behind Matt Ryan. The last two games, or last four games, I should say, they're three and one. But he's a 10 to one touchdown interception ratio. And it's all because of Kyle Pitts, who's got 400, or he's got. 467 yards uh, in his first uh, six games, which is the most for a tight end starting. And it's not, and it's because he's not a tight end, by the way. 40% uh, of his snaps, he's up in the, he's lined up in the slot. Another 38%, he's lined up out wide. And I guess as a tight end, he's like 20 some percent as a tight end. Uh, but he's become dynamic. He's become reliable. I like Atlanta. Uh, the, the line is three. It should be 10. Uh, they, they are going to run away from the Carolina Panthers, who are in complete struggle free fall mode right now. Falcons opened up as a two and a half point favorite, gone up to three now. And really, as you said, Tiggy, these are two teams going in opposite directions. Panthers struggling without McCaffrey and the Atlanta Falcons offense suddenly clicking with uh, Matt Ryan and Pitts. All right. So let's now flip it over to Rondé. What's your game of the week? 
I was very tempted to go with the Titans Colts because it's another division game in the South and, you know, Ryan Tannehill played his best game, but I, I watched Carson Wentz play last week and I was like, I just, I don't think I trust him right now. <laughs> I love Jonathan Taylor because much like Kyle Pitts for Tiki, he's on our fantasy team, but I, went, I wanted to go with it. With, uh, with, no, <laughs> he's a draft. baller, bro. He is a baller. Uh, anyways, I went with Cowboys and Vikings and just because I wanted a good NFC matchup this week. And I, it, no disrespect to the Packers Cardinals game. That's going to be, you know, probably the game of the week. Uh, and, and, and people were, were saying, asking me if I was going to do uh, Tampa, New Orleans, because it's, you know, Tampa, New Orleans, but and no, I don't trust New Orleans. I like Cowboys and Vikings. And look, the Vikings are on two game win streak finally, and Dallas has fi- found a way to win every single game since they lost uh, to, to Tampa in week one. And, and by the way, on that run, they have covered every single time. They were underdogs wow. twice, they covered. They were favorites four times, they covered. <laughs> the Dallas Cowboys are a fantastic watch. Now, we know about them, right? They lead the league in points and yards. We've talked about how good their skilled players are numerous times. However, they still have the fifth worst pass defense in the NFL, despite mm-hmm. leading the league in interceptions. What does that tell you? It's difficult <laughs> to count on that every week. Just, oh, I'm going to uh, play it close, and then uh, Diggs is going to give me a spectacular interception. We're going to win the football game. But it's, they've done that so far. I just can't, I just can't trust it. And consider that Kirk Cousins, right, is playing like a top 10 quarterback, finally, right? He, he's wow. had some, some, some moments. Uh, he's only got two interceptions this year. So I, I, I think this game at two and a half for the Cowboys, it's very, very intriguing. Uh, Vikings have uh, put, they put up a bunch of yards, right? They 415 yards a game, I think, or something. Uh, Thielen's still catching t- TDs. Justin Jefferson's a great player. Uh, their, their runner, Dalvin Cook, you know, when he's healthy, he's one of the top three running backs in football. And Tiki, you remember this. You remember when uh, Minnesota had a formidable defense? Yep. <laughs> I, I, it was a long time ago, right? Yeah. They're, they're, they're young on the back end. Uh, they, they, get, they get after the quarterback with Daniel Hunter and Everson Griffin. But, look, Dak is a bad man. And this is, this is a good bet for me because them boys are better than a field goal than, 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 uh, than, than the Vikings, even the Vikings at home. The only reason this is intriguing to me because the Vikings are playing at home and they're giving two and a half to the Dallas Cowboys. And I think the Dallas Cowboys are better uh, than three points than, than the Minnesota Vikings. If I may say, Dak Prescott has a calf injury. We don't know how healthy he's going to be. And here's a stat on Kirk Cousins. There are three players in 115 games that have thrown for 30,000 yards and 200 plus touchdowns. Peyton Manning, uh, Dan Marino, and Kurt Cousins. Just say it. Yeah, that's Man, pretty. Baller. That's 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 one of those. That's not. It's possible. one of those mind you know what stats. Like what? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what? I mean, you only get this insight right here on this show. I mean, you guys are dropping stats like crazy, man. I'm, I'm impressed. We, we, uh, we, we were stat, we were stat guys when we played. It had to be. Ah, uh, you know what? I gave you insight, man. It gave you insight on it. It gave you insight on what teams may or may not try to do to me. I love that. And no spoiler alert, but it's going to lead perfectly into our viewer question of the week. <laughs> oh, we're not getting there yet. It. Hey, quickly. Um, this was an interesting line with the Cowboys and the Vikings. This opened up as a pick 'em, according to Superbook Sports. Uh, and now it's gone up to the Cowboys minus two and a half uh, over under opened at 53. And it's up to 55. Uh, Odds makers are expecting some points to be scored in this one. Both teams coming off a bye week, which we'll see, as as Tiki mentioned, how healthy is Dak Prescott. And on the flip side, uh, Dalvin Cook for the Vikings. They did get a week off. All right, guys, uh, great stuff. Time now for our bet or bust segment, rapid fire predictions. Three teams that you are either going to uh, bet or you are going to bust. And our first team, here we go. We're going to take a look at Thursday night football, probably the game of the week, and the Arizona Cardinals. They are a minus six and a half against the Green Bay Packers. Arizona 7-0, and oh, Green Bay 6-1. and one. Uh, Arizona opened as a minus three and a half point uh, favorite, but with Adams and Lazard, who were placed on the COVID-19 list as of this recording, we're not sure of their status to play on uh, Thursday night football. So the line moves up to Arizona 
minus six and a half. Tiki, are you betting it or are you busting it? I'm betting this one all day. Kyler Murray is an MVP candidate for sure. I don't know what his odds are. I'm sure Riggs can get it for us. But Kyler Murray is playing great <laughs> football. And by the way, it's not because he's just dynamic running around in the pocket and picking up yards with his legs. 51 yards a game he averaged last year. You know what he's averaging this year? 18. Why? Because he's staying in the pocket and delivering yeah. dimes downfield. He had a third and 24 last week. They played cover two behind him. He threw a perfect strike, 30, 41 yards downfield to A.J. Green at the four-yard line. It was one of the most beautiful throws you'll ever see. The DB's like jumping to grab it, the sinking cover two guy. Can't yeah. get it. It's right where it needed to be. He's been doing it all day. I like this off. Nobody can stop this offense. As Rondé mentioned, whatever it was, three or four weeks ago, because they do so much quirky stuff. Um, I yes. love them uh, getting or laying six here. Yeah, Rondé? I, I totally, totally agree with you, Tiki. They did that last week with with Cliff Kingsbury being on uh, in the COVID protocol all week right. too. I mean, yeah. It's like that doesn't even matter who's coaching. It, it's interesting that you. <laughs> yeah, and he's the play player. caller, right? He's the play caller. Yeah, yeah he's yeah, not exactly. even there. It's interesting. It, it's interesting you brought up that play, T, because I was doing uh, some other uh, work at, at, at One Buck the other day, and some guys were asking me about that throw. So I pulled up the play, right? It's it's covered to – he get what he does is get that safety to work towards the middle of the field. Then he has to try to make a baseball turn. And, but he Ooh. did it on purpose. And he was – in the way he set up in the pocket, I was like, this dude is 5'10", and he just threw a 40-yard strike like it was nothing. And the way that he set up the defenders and the whole brace base and the whole defense to make the throw it tells me that he is on a different level than he has been uh, in his first uh, in his other two years in the NFL. This guy is he's a, he's a stud. I, I take him. I take the points on him every single week, man. Yeah. Well, someone's against the spread. Win streaks coming to an end. The Cardinals are five and zero against the spread in their last five games. Packers six and zero against the spread in their last six. What a great way to kick off week eight. And of course, uh, our producer, Mike Rigg, got us the MVP breakdown. Murray comes in. He is right now, guys, as the three to one favorite to win the wow. NFL MVP award. Brady, seven and one. Mm. Mm. Wow. There we go. All right. <laughs> That's about right. That is what it is. Yeah. <laughs> Let's, uh, <laughs> let's let's keep it rolling with uh bet or bust our second game ah oh, do we really have to talk about this denver is uh, a minus three against the washington football team coming here to colorado the broncos opened as a minus four favorites shockingly they probably shouldn't be four point favorites to anybody <laughs> except maybe my high school my son's high school football team i don't know guys Denver minus three. Are you betting or are you busting? We'll go Rondé. I'm I'm gonna go uh, betting it for the same reason that Tiki was almost talking about. Uh, was the same reason what Tiki was talking about with the the Atlanta Falcons in that in that Carolina game. Yeah, just go go with the trends. Yes, that Denver's losing some games here, but they're still playing pretty good defense, right? And and mm -hmm. Washington looks incompetent at times on 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 offense. We we mentioned that last week. You know, Taylor Heineke is just he's just a guy right now. Um so three at home uh with a with a Washington team that really seems, you know, kind of disjointed and and not able to find ways to win. Their productive players on defense are just not productive. Uh I, I think Teddy Bridgewater finds a way to bounce back at home. And I, I would definitely take this. Yeah, I would bet this one as well. You know, it, I like Tyler uh, Heineke, and I think Antonio Gibson's a good player, and, and McLaurin's a good good player as well. But something's just not clicking. And you're, now you're going to fly across the country, play at Mile High Stadium, and it sounds like, oh, it's just Mile High. I mean, the Mile High attitude's not going to affect you. It does affect you. It makes you, mm -hmm. like, yeah. parched and thirsty, and you just feel worn after, like, three or four plays. And so I think for a team that's been struggling, maybe with conditioning, I don't know what it is, but they don't look like they're getting after it, the Washington football team. Not, they don't look like they're getting after it all the, all the time. I bet this one all day. 
Yeah, I'm joining in. Well, shocker there. I, I think there's so much on the Denver Broncos right now to turn this around, especially with their, after their defensive performance last week, letting Johnson run all over mm -hmm. against them. Oh, They've got something to prove this week. I think they will they will get the cover as well. All right, third game. Uh, are we betting or are we busting? Guys, the Chiefs, speaking of beatdowns, uh, how do the Super Bowl runner-ups respond after getting destroyed by Tennessee last week? And, man, Patrick Mahomes, I thought he got knocked out. I thought I was calling some fights. That was a massive hit that he took. But the Chiefs are minus 10 favorites as they welcome in uh, Tiki, your New York Giants on Monday Night Football. Tiki, are you betting it or are you busting it? Are you taking the Chiefs? I'm minus busting this, man. I'm busting this all day. Oh. And, by the way, this is one of the great money lines that you'll see all week. And there's some big ones as well. Miami Dolphins are plus 600. That's according to Sportsbook, uh, Superbook, I mean. Um, so at the end of the day, that sounds awesome, man. Put 100, I get 600. The Dolphins have no shot at winning on the money. Line. The Jets, <laughs> same way. They're plus 350. They have zero shot against beating the Bengals. The New York Giants at plus 360 might be the best money line bet of this week. Wow. Why? Because the New York Giants actually are playing good football. They just make stupid mm -hmm. mistakes, and that's why they've lost a lot of games. But when they're clean, like we saw last week, and Daniel Jones does Daniel Jones things, like I told you like a month ago, he's the best athlete on that football team, making that one-handed snag and, and yeah. not making that any mistakes. Unreal. Uh, Kansas City's faltering right now. Pat Mahomes is 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 so in his head trying to be the superstar mm -hmm. that everybody's propped him up to be, Good that he's point. making stupid mistakes. I know this is on the road, um, and I know the Giants aren't great, but I'm busting this. Giants, uh, you know, getting ten, take it. And and in fact, if I had an extra couple hundred dollars laying around, throw it on the money line because that's a big return for if it plus three sixty. I was getting ready to say that we we're going to disagree on our on the uh, regular bets and agree on all of these, but Peaky, I know you love your Giants, dude. No <laughs> chance. No chance. You played in Kansas City, right? Uh -huh. You've been there. Yeah, I did. Not... <laughs> they did, this... but I, the, oh, the one time I was there, they treated us well. You know, no, just well, just, just in full disclosure, it was because it was after nine eleven, and so oh, it wasn't yeah. the hostile environment that, that everybody's used to. Yeah. Well, this is going to be a hostile environment. There is you talk about uh, a, a wounded animal being it backed into a corner. This is what the Kansas City Chiefs are right now. And or maybe they're not them. good. Or maybe they're not that good. <laughs> that could drop be eight. the thing. The teams hey, drop eight how, now. How many hey, we... Batman, it, it, he got exposed. Your dude, Todd yeah. Bowles, exposed them. Drop eight, play coverage. Pat Mahomes doesn't want to yeah. run. He can. He doesn't want to. Yeah. So he scrambles around and does stupid stuff. So they, maybe they're just not that good. Ago, Defensively, they're not having a good weeks ago. They, what's that? Weeks ago, were we talking about the New York football giants being a terrible football team? And yes, they no, they're go out injured. And they're, they're, I've never said they're terrible. Well, they're an injured on, on. football team. Okay, I, maybe, I said, football maybe, I said team. Were, maybe I said they were terrible. They go out and dominate a Thank Panthers you. team, which you just told us was uh, falling off a cliff, so to speak metaphorically as a football team and now all of a sudden we feel good about the new york giants do i like the Dan giants Dan? have Absolutely. lost games I like they've Dan lost Dan. games because they jump off sides they lost games because uh, well, on, literally on the last play of the game. losing games kansas city kansas city and, and you know this as well we always talk about our fantasy <laughs> team we patrick mahomes is on our fantasy team they're losing games and he's still putting up monstrous numbers do you know why they lose games because they turn the ball over in the red zone more than any yeah. team in the and they NFL. can't stop they lead yeah. the league in turnovers or giveaways i should say if 17 they, if, i know 17 if, on the season if they if they, if they have a if game, it looks like a duck it quacks like a duck it's probably a duck <laughs> they're a turnover prone team I just this was, I could listen to this all day long, guys. And you know what? We should do a watch party for this game with you two going at it. I mean, we might need to set that up. But this was supposed to be rapid fire. Just to recap, Rondé's going with the Chiefs and Tiki's going with the Chiefs. So that's going to be a lot of fun. All that's right. Hey. Nonsense. <laughs> I got to keep this rolling. Let's, uh, let's get to our viewer question this week, guys. And, uh, man – all you got to do to our viewers and listeners is send in a, a uh, question for the guys, and uh, you might be hanging with the Barber Brothers in Las Vegas on Super Bowl weekend. 
Uh, it's just that simple. Send in your question via Twitter to at Superbook Sports, at Rondé Barber, at Tiki Barber, and at Ron Cruck, and you're in. It's just that simple. You know, we were talking earlier about you guys are stacked, guys. You're throwing numbers around like crazy this week, which I love. And so this leads into a perfect viewer question uh, coming in from Kerry Frank. Uh, great question. Guys, which one of you? Was the biggest bookworm in high school? Oh, it's not oh, even gosh. man. Like it's not even like, like you want a debate here. There's no debate. This is not this even. This isn't a debate. You know what? It, which one of us looks like he's the cool twin? <laughs> which one looks like they made straight the which, entire which, which time? Which one exactly. of us looks like? Which one of us looks like he would put on glasses and push up his nose and button <laughs> his shirt to, and button oh. his shirt to the to the to the top button? And, I had my glasses and, here somewhere. <laughs> oh, I needed that prop. I know, I did. I had them. They're gone. I don't know where to put them. Definitely, T, T, I, I, will, I will give him credit. He's a not even a bookworm. He's just a nerd. He just, nerd? everything. Are you calling easy. your brother a valedic, val, valedictorian, nerd? Valedictorian. I don't think he ever had a B, uh, you know. Yeah. Wow. From, should, from A to A, he never had a B. Never. You should no ask the question the other way. On. Which one? Which you should ask it the other way. Which one of the twins likes to have more fun? <laughs> <laughs> well, way, I majored in management information systems and database design, and you know, could program in C plus plus and COBOL and all those things. It's all gone now, but I'm that's the impressive geek. nerd. <laughs> <laughs> We love, oh, we love guys. nerds. We have that a is the of, best. What a, a great question family. coming in from <laughs> Kerry Frank. Thank you. Uh, we really appreciate it. You can send in your questions anytime during the week at Superbook Sports. And you will, if we read your question on air, automatically uh, put into the drawing for a uh, Las Vegas Super Bowl weekend hanging out with the Barber Brothers. Guys, that's uh, that's all the time we have. It's going to wrap up another episode of Betting with the Barbers. I hate to even ask this because our producer's losing his mind right now. But <laughs> any thoughts before uh, we kick off week number eight? It's getting football weather time. Four, yeah, yes. I bet you Tom Brady throws for four more touchdowns this week. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Even though for four touchdowns in his bye week, I believe. I know. Uh, By the way, just one today. Bitcoin for his 600 football. Just yeah. one. By just the way, one. By the way, that's a, that's a, a that's a that's a that, that's a that's a one of one. And well, there's not going to really. be another. There's not going to be a two of one. Two of two. That, that's one of one. Nobody's throwing for 600 touchdowns. What what, yeah. what what makes what makes 600 the arbitrary number? I made this point on Twitter the other day. Dude, challenge oh. me on it. You want his last football. That's the one you want. You want Mike Evans to do a dummy throw his last touchdown. What if the what if the touchdown that ball that he threw in the stadium at the end of that game is Tom Brady's last touchdown? Whoa, that's the one you want. That's the one you want. Great point, guys. <laughs> hey, listen. Happy Halloween to both of you and enjoy the games as we kick off week number eight. You as well. Cheers, Thanks, Ron. Guys. Cheers, Tiki. All right. Man, you guys were battling today. I love it. We got to work on that watch party. Make sure you uh, (laughs) sign up at Superbook.com. Download the Superbook app for the latest odds and follow Superbook on social media at Superbook Sports. Uh, Betting with the Barbers airs on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. Tell your friends and make sure, again, to uh, look for clips of the show and picks throughout the weekend at Superbook Sports. You can check out the podcast version on both Apple and Spotify, too. For Rondé and Tiki Barber, the Battling Barber Brothers, I'm Ron Cruck. Enjoy the games as we kick off week number eight in the NFL.